Hello, Titans and future Guardian game winners. <clears throat> I mean, hello, all Guardians of all classes. Guardian games got a bit complicated this year and a bit buggy, so we're going to kind of explain everything we've got going on. We've got a few new quests, invisible platforms and torches. Laurels are back, and lots of them. Contender cards have more options than ever before. And we also have a very elusive SMG that does not seem to be dropping. There's also a three-week competition for each Guardian or fire team, and the Guardian Cup for those creators involved as well. Bungie even brought out the old armor glows for achievements and even the Destiny 1 strike scoring system that I know most people have been hoping for. The tower really has been fancied up this time around, but you know what else is in celebration mode? The sponsor of this video. I want to say happy birthday to Raid Shadow Legends, which is the sponsor of this video. They are turning three years old this month and they are throwing a heck of a party and celebration that you're not going to want to miss. And to kick off the celebration, I want to tell you guys about the top three champions that I've got my eyes on and I've also got my eyes on these scary Hydras. These are the champions that I want to get on my end game team. Number three, an awesome looking samurai named Genro Stork. Seriously, truly sick armor and 80 resist aura buff. Amazing to have on your team. Number two, Inithwi Blood Twin, part of the Demon Spawn faction, looks freaking awesome and is basically going to give everybody a 33% attack buff. And then number one, the absolute unit, Demon Spawn, Mortu Macabre. His aura gives everybody 24% speed. These three together, I just need one more and I'm going to have an awesome team that I can't wait to face the end game with. So believe me, there's always a champion for you. These are just some of my top three that I cannot wait to get. This month, since Raid is celebrating its three-year anniversary, it's going to be a huge in-game celebration and giveaway. Free gifts for everyone to kick things off, along with loads of new content and new artifact sets. Even a personal video showing your achievements so far in Raid. All month long will be full of special events and tournaments with some of the best prizes they have ever offered, like new badass champions, piles and piles and piles of shards, and tons of other goodies, all month long. So now really is the best time to get started in Raid. If you aren't yet playing, hit my link in the description or scan the QR code on, that you've seen on screen. This one right here or the link below. Either one will do just fine. Just click one of them and you'll get a huge birthday gift from Raid worth $40. Three free champions all at once. My Zeracord, Tiger Soul, and Romero. Plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force Brews, and 10 Spirit Brews. All treasures will be waiting for you in your inbox. But you've already been playing, so you're not a brand new player? That's fine too. They've got a gift for you. All you've got to do is enter the promo code three years raid in game, and you're going to have $25 worth of gifts sent to you instantly right in game. I've already done it. Takes like five seconds. You can do it as well. It really is that easy. And this really is the best time to be playing Raid Shadow Legends. Honestly, I'm still surprised that a game that is this fun and looks this good is sitting in my pocket, but technology's come a long way. So, click the link below in the description, scan the QR code on screen, and I'll see you guys in Teleria. Now, back to Guardian Games and my guide to get you through it. Alright, thank you guys for watching the sponsor ad. Those really do help support the channel. So again, thank you and check out that link below in the description. But, let's get to Guardian Games. So step one is to complete the main quest line best in class, which you could do in less than an hour to unlock basically all that Guardian Games has to offer. You'll just need to buy a contender card from Ava with the laurel she gives you, and please make sure you equip the class item she gives you as well and leave it on you. That is how you earn laurels. I'll get to those in a little bit, but if you don't have your class item equipped, you will not earn laurels. Makes this whole process very difficult. For the contender card, I recommend Vanguard Playlist and just go run a quick Vanguard Strike. You're going to earn the 10 laurels and medallion you need at the end of the strike. Very simple. Talk to Eva, then go to the podium. You're going to deposit the medals that you earn. When you go back, Eva will grant you the medallion battalion quest. She's also going to give you your medal case as well. These are two things you'll interact with as you go. Then you're going to go talk to Zavala. He's going to ask you to run through the Guardian Games recreational playlist where you'll likely earn a, more than one Vanguard medal, but you just need one, and you also get the completion. When that's done, he's going to give you the shoot to score quest, which I'll cover a little bit later, but that one goes on for the entire event. Then you're going to head back to Eva Levante. She's going to complete the quest, and she's going to give you your the title SMG. 
And right now, it seems that is the only one you're going to get, so don't delete it. Now, the reason I say that is because as of recording this video on Tuesday, well, technically it's Wednesday morning when I'm recording this, but first 24 hours right now, it seems like the drops for the SMG are bugged. Um, even the community manager for Bungie right now said something's up and they are looking into it. Most of us assume that if you deposit high level metals into the podium, which you've done one of those already, or if you do, you know, Guardian Games playlist activities that you're going to get a chance of the drop. But right now it is dropping nowhere for anyone. So when I get updated inf information, I'm going to add that to the pinned comment below the link for raid. And then I'm also going to put that in the description of the video. So if you check the pinned comment from me and nothing else is there, that has not changed. As soon as it changes and I'm at a place where I can update it, I will update that information for you. So if you are trying to farm the title SMG, know that until I let you guys know more information about it, that it is not dropping outside of this quest. So that is the main piece. Best in class, first nine quick steps, knock it out in under an hour, and you'll get your first title. Hold on to it until we know where we're going to get more. All right, before I go forward, I got to go backwards a little bit. Laurels, what are they? Basically, they are the currency of Guardian Games. It's what you use to buy your contender cards which you can earn gold or platinum medals to deposit for your class. Medals have point values. Bronze is 1, silver is 2, gold is 5, and platinum is 15. Bronze will drop from basic activities like you finish a strike, you're going to get a bronze medal. Simple. Silver tend to be a little higher in difficulty. Finish a nightfall, you're going to get a plat uh, silver medal. Finish a high-level lost sector, probably also a silver medal. Gold and platinum medals only come from the contender cards, which is why laurels are so important. So how do you earn them? Well, in strikes, for example, you'll see some drop when you kill majors or bosses, but mainly you're going to see them drop much more frequently from ability kills. And they seem to drop best from active ability kills, or at least that's the word I'm going to use. Picture this. A grenade kill will, when you kill an enemy with a grenade, that's going to drop a laurel. When you kill an enemy with, say, like my Titan shield throw and it hits the enemy and kills them, that's going to count. Apparently things like sunspots, for example, off like, you know, somewhere else, those apparently don't. Maybe that's a weird bug and maybe they do for you. But the idea is just be aware that the you're being active in using your abilities, supers, grenades, melees that are, you know, actually charged, not just punching something, are going to get you the laurels to drop. Now, a thing to know, in Gambit, when you kill enemies, you're not really going to get too many laurels to drop. Same thing with Crucible. Now, I got a couple melee kills in Crucible, like literally uncharged, but just punched a dude and got five, which is random. But the, at the end of a Crucible match and a Gambit match, you only get like 15 laurels. When I'm done with the strike, I get like 100, 150. So it really doesn't seem to compare. So just keep that in mind. Now, there are exotic class items that can help you earn laurels faster by keeping your abilities basically up much more frequently. For the Titans, depending on the subclass you're running, you've got a couple of different options. Insurmountable Score Fort. This one is basically going to give you a shoulder charge, and if you kill something, you're going to get your shoulder charge back. That's going to be a really good way to do it. Ash and Wake. If you throw the Fusion Grenade and it connects, and you get that instant kill, Fusion Grenade should be right back up. You've also got things like Halifier Heart. If your super is charged, your solar abilities, like Grenade and Melee, recharge really fast. Even if it's not charged then they recharge faster. But again, if you don't use your super and you have Halifier Heart on, you're going to get your grenades and your melee abilities up very, very quickly. So if you're going solar, that's a way. I've been running a lot of Void, so part of Inmost Light, when you use one ability, you briefly improve the other abilities for about 10 seconds. And then if I like put up my barricade and then throw a grenade, my melee is charging extremely fast. And then the others are charging fast as well. So it's a nice little cycle of abilities. And what you're trying to do is always get ability kills. This one's a good one. For Warlocks, you've got a couple options as well. If you're going Arc, Crown of Tempest, Arc Ability Kills, Restore Arc Abilities. Pretty straightforward, nice little cycle there. For Void, this is the thing. If you guys paid attention and went to Xur, which I hope you did, Nezerak Sin, Void Kills of all kind increase Ability Regen. So if you're using Void, especially 3.0 and Void Weapons, here's your guy. Uh, if you're doing Solar, Sun Bracers, if you get a melee kill, you can chunk out like five Solar Grenades. Solar Grenades last longer. That type of thing. Also using weapons that are going to have like Demolitionist and Wellspring. Probably wouldn't lean too much into Thresh. Those are the types of things that are also going to help using weapons when you get the option to. 
that have those perks on them that are going to help you. So if you have a craftable weapon and you can go switch something out to get, you know, demolitionist on there and then adrenaline junkie, you know, you get some nice little synergy going on, but anything that helps you get your abilities. Controverse hold, um, void grenades, and then if you get kills with those void grenades, you get energy back. Nothing manacles, enhanced scatter grenades. And you've got a second one. You don't get the return energy, but you used to. That was Destiny 1. And then for hunters, you've got some options here as well. Uh, Assassin's Cal is not the one I was actually thinking of, so sorry about that. Uh, but Shinobu's Vow, you've got improved skip grenades. And then skip grenade returns energy when it damages enemies. You've got Liar's Handshake. When you start just punching things with cross counter. I remember doing this up in the moon where you've got the Altars of Sorrow. And all of a sudden, just punching every enemy that comes out of there, if they're easy melee enemies that don't explode, for example, you can just sit there and punch pretty good enemies, get it a three stack, and you can punch things and kill them very quickly. You've got Lucky Raspberry, Arc Bolt Grenades. If it gets a full chain, it fully recharges. You've got Young Ahamkara's Spine. Ability damage grants enhanced trip mines. And then, or sorry, increased trip mine grenade duration and blast radius. And then you get about ability damage gets you grenade energy back. All of these types of exotics are what you're looking to use in whatever activity you're running to get your abilities back faster, whether it's melees, a lot of grenade ones, all of those work. There's also one very important weapon to use, and that is Monte Carlo. Weapon damage reduces melee ability cooldown. Sometimes if you get a kill, it just completely recharges your melee, but if you want your melees up and then you have a synergy with some mods where your melee gets you grenade and anything of that nature, this is the type of synergy if you want to be as efficient as possible these exotics, this weapon, mods on your character, anything that helps you get your abilities back faster, that is what you want. Because every ability kill, getting you laurels. The people you're running with if you're in a fire team, they're making laurels for you, you're making laurels for them, you're swimming in laurels and the laurels are not a big deal. Now, let me talk about farming laurels real quick. If you go run a gambit match or a crucible match, you only get like 15, maybe 20 from those. That's why I don't recommend doing them basically the entire event. If you're going for medals and laurels, main place you're going to want to be is strikes. Now, I'll get to the price of contender cards and all that type of stuff, but the ones for nightfalls cost more than vanguard ops. So sometimes you're going to be a little low on laurels for, say, the nightfall card. So go do a regular strike. You're still going to get a lot of laurels and it's cheaper for the gold card. Then, when you buy the Platinum card, then you can go in here, still get a decent amount of laurels because there's always a lot of enemies. So my point is, yes, you could go do farms like Grasp of Avarice in the opening, and you could stack up your laurels to 500, which is the cap. But as the Platinum card costs 200, doesn't really feel like it's worth farming. You could also technically farm at Shuro Chi. That's an option if you put it in the Wish Wall and you really just want to get your laurels up real quick. But honestly, I don't recommend that. Just spend some time in the Strikes work on anything else just probably like gambit and crucible are going to be probably the least advantageous for you anything with a lot of pve enemies especially vanguard or nightfall that's my recommendation farms not really necessary for laurels but if you need them sure you can go do those okay so now you know how to earn laurels buy contender cards and you're earning medals well, the more you earn and the more you deposit is where you're going to make progress towards your medallion battalion quest and the medallion battalion quest has four levels to it this week and then we're probably going to get a reset on each week so right now as you can see i'm 87 percent and i'm getting ready to unlock the platinum medallion torch i'll show you where the torch is in a second basically every medallion you deposit i gave you guys the point values like platinums are worth 15 points you need a total of 240 points deposited within a week to get this quest up to 100% completely through. Because it's going to show you different levels of this quest. Bronze is 60, and it'll only show you a percentage, but bronze is 60 points. Silver is 120, gold 180, platinum 240, just so you guys know. But that is the idea. The more metals you deposit, the more progress you make here, and... This is going to unlock the Guardian Games Platinum Rewards packages and other packages. Now, I'm on the Platinum step. These should be unlocked. Bronze Medallion Torch, Silver Medallion Torch, Gold Medallion Torch. Now, if you look at Ava Levante and you come back here, once you get the quests that I showed you guys progressed through each section, 
you're going to have these platforms actually show up. Otherwise, it's going to be invisible like those over there, and you're just going to fall straight through. But you light your torch, and you get a baby reward. Light the torch, get a baby reward. I'm up to gold. I'm not too far away from platinum. So for week one, I am almost done with my metals that I need to deposit. Not quite there, but I am close. Now, the question that you guys probably have is, what is the best way to get the most metals? And that's honestly going to be a preference to you, but my recommendation is pretty much always gonna bounce between two things. As I was saying, the platinum cards are gonna cost 200. Notice right now I have 323 laurels. If I go do the Platinum Nightfall card, I'm going to buy this card and I'm going to go into the training playlist. Now, why specifically here? The main reason is because of the rewards. You get a chance at exotics if you get Platinum rewards. So kill all the champions. Hence why having a fire team can help, but maybe your focus is the champions. Let everybody else do other things. Prisms. If you need prisms for upgrade materials or you're just farming prisms for whatever reason... They drop a lot in here. I think I've got 10 from just playing today alone. And that was a decent amount of hours, but still, I didn't farm this that often. I Basically, I feel like I got a prism or two every other time. Nightfall weapons, also pretty common in here. I've run this thing, not entirely sure how many times I've run this specific playlist, but I've already got, I think, two to three hotheads, which is the weapon this week. So you get a chance at nightfall weapons. They're not going to be adept, but they're nightfall weapons. You get enhancement prisms and exotic gear having a chance to drop. Now, you're basically running a 1550 Nightfall, but the difference between a 1550 Nightfall is yes, this looks the same, but matchmaking is off. And the nice thing about the Guardian Games playlist is you can have matchmaking or you can turn off matchmaking if you just wanna go through it solo for whatever reason. But honestly, you can do a 1550 Nightfall match made. You're going to have some modifiers. Make sure you got, you know, this week's Barrier Unstoppable. Got a couple shields. Pay attention to the EQ burn. Put on some defense. This one is pull harm, so melee attacks will do more damage, but you take more damage from foes that are far away. So it's this weird balance of things. And then Exploder units have more health. So you got those things. Take those into account, but the idea is the rewards you get in here, this still counts as a strike, and it counts as a Nightfall Strike. So if you're sitting here looking at Ava. Buy this one, it's going to be a platinum card. I don't know if I've actually... And all it's going to tell you is to get kills in the playlist. The nice thing about this one, it's almost easier to get the kills in this playlist than it is to get this one done. But sometimes you're not going to have the 200 laurels. If I get down to, say, like 175, then I would buy the Vanguard playlist card. Then I truly would just go to the Vanguard playlist, Vanguard Ops, go run a, one of these basic strikes, and try... And if you're doing this, try and do it on a day where you've got Grenadier... Or maybe you've got Brawler, and then pay attention to the Singe. Play with those exotics that you've got and get the most out of it. Run that once or twice, and because it's usually going to ask you to get like... This one's probably going to ask you to get like Solar or Stasis kills, or Arc or Stasis kills. So match up your subclass, match up your weapons. Even if the burn isn't quite matching you, your goal is your playlist card. Knock that one out, and then if you do a strike, and this one only costs you 100, you probably are going to have enough then to go do a Nightfall then maybe you bounce back here. Do a couple of these, come back up here. You're going to go through gold and platinum back and forth, just depending on the number of laurels you have, pretty easily. Trials, I'm not sure what the requirements are going to be. For the raid, this one's going to be a bit more difficult because it's going to be killing enemies, but it's also going to be completing multiple encounters in a raid or a dungeon. That is not nearly as fast as doing a strike that takes about 15 to 18 minutes. Here, you've got higher difficulty Throne World activities. Those are not match-made. Higher difficulty seasonal activities, like Legend Psyops, not match-made. Now, the other option is going to be Lost Sectors. If you have a fire team, or if you are farming for exotic armor, for example, this is another option. Uh, I did one of the Lost Sector day. I did it once on Legend, and once on Master, and completed this card. I was able to do that in about 20 minutes between the two runs. Which is not bad because, you know, 15, 18, 20 minutes, those could be about the same if you're good at Lost Sectors. But again, this one is match made. In my opinion, this is the easiest Platinum to do every time because it's match made, tons of enemies, so you're getting the most laurels back because you have three teammates, tons of enemies to kill generally in all of these strikes, and you're not having to go farm at a lower level and get less. So that's my recommendation of how to do your medals. Live in here. 
go into the Guardian Games training playlist, or if it's the weekend, it's the competitive playlist, which takes me into the last or the second to last quest. Second to last, we have the shoot to loot quests. This involves Guardian Games training, which is the one that I've been showing you guys. This is active Tuesday through Thursday. And then the competitive playlist is likely going to replace this one on Friday, basically the same time Zerg gets here. Basically, each week will be based around one strike. This week is the Light Blade. And each of the weeks are going to have scoring thresholds. So if you go pull up the quest, you're going to see week one, we have a scoring threshold. Bronze is 50k, silver 100k, gold is 150, platinum is 175k. If you give it a few tries, you're probably going to get gold easily. And then if you really focus up, find a group of random people that actually kill everything, you're going to get to 175 as well. I had a run where I didn't think we were going to hit platinum and we actually squeaked over it. But I've been over it multiple times. I had one run of, I think, tryhards that were playing really well. And I got 227,000. That was that was a match made run. Now, I haven't been back close to that, but I've only done this thing like eight to 10 times. So the fact that this is up here by itself is not bad. First run, you're probably not gonna get as high, but as you go through, what's gonna happen is the higher threshold you get, if you get silver and then you get gold, you're going to get a nice little buff. And what you're doing is in the training section of the week, Notice it says reach score thresholds to earn buffs that last throughout the week. And you'll notice I have this little guy right here, Gold Contender's Boon. Now this is weird. You guys saw that I had earned Platinum. 175k was the threshold. I've hit 227,000. I've passed 175 multiple times. And just to prove it, you can go in here to your medals and you can actually see that I've done, uh, well, somewhere, oh, Vanguard medals. You can actually see I've got a platinum, platinum tier achieve, cross the platinum shut threshold. I've done that plenty of times, like seven already. So that's not the issue. So I don't know if this is a bug, but the gold contenders boon is the highest one I have right now. And if you read the description, this is why it makes me think there are, there is a platinum boon, but maybe it's bugged. I'm not entirely sure, but this buff commemorates your gold tier score in the Guardian Games training or competitive playlist. And maybe the idea is you have to earn the platinum, you have to get a platinum score in the competitive. Maybe that gives you the platinum boon to really get you up in the competitive playlist. We're just gonna have to see. But for now, defeating combatants with abilities grants increasing weapon damage, while defeating combatants with weapons grants increasing ability recharge. And these things stack. When at maximum empowerment, Defeating combatants boost mobility. Actually, you jump pretty high and run fast. Handling, accuracy, reload, and then you'll start back over on week two. So basically, what you're doing in each week is you're training in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to get the most buff you can. Maybe that's gold for training. And then in the competitive playlist, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you're going to be going for as high of a score as possible. And the idea is, Bungie has said that they are going to, when you're in the competitive playlist, you're gonna be logging your highest score for week one. Same thing for week two, train and compete. And then same thing for week three, train and compete. Your combined score for week one, week two, and week three, the highest competitive score that you registered, if you are in the top 10%, you're going to earn an exclusive emblem. And that is actually one of those cool looking emblems that I kind of want to get. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get to the top 10%, but I am going to try. So that is the whole idea of what the other side of this whole thing is for. All these little platforms over here that I can't really stand on this yet. This is going to be for the competitive scoring side. When you cross the thresholds, I'm guessing you're going to be opening these. And you're going to be lighting the torches like I've lit over there. Bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Same principle. And the main reason I think that is because Eva has these rewards. And the rewards are also bugged. So right now the SMG is not dropping. As I said, it's not dropping when you deposit metals. It's not dropping from the playlist activities. Nothing yet. Hopefully that gets fixed. But you have to imagine that the, the SMG is probably in some of these as well. So on this side... Bronze Medallion Torch. That's the Medallion Battalion. 
that's that quest. I've done bronze, silver, and gold. I've done all of these and I'm almost done with platinum. None of these are openable for me right now. A lot of us think that's a bug or maybe they're going to open over the weekend. Still not entirely sure. It seems like these would open now since I've lit the torches, but what do I know? Over here, you've got bronze scoring torch rewards. Bronze, silver, gold, and then platinum. Now, these make sense that they would be for the competitive because trainings like practice. Competitive would be like, you know, regular season as opposed to preseason. So these make sense that I can't access these yet. But these not working right now does, I think, tend to lead towards more bug territory because I've actually lit the torch and I can't open the package. So that is the main idea behind these unclaimed rewards. And notice it says week one. You're going to be able to claim these for week one, week two, and week three if you're around. So that is the idea with the shoot to score quest, the training and competitive playlists, and then also the possible rewards that you're going to be able to get from them. We have one more thing to cover, and it's a quick run through of the air apparent exotic quest. It's really easy. I've said it before, and I've said it again. If you do not have this machine gun, you get to get it once a year for these three weeks. It is a very, very easy quest to get. Literally, all you have to do to get the weapon, you need to earn 50 laurels. You will probably do that in one strike. And then you need to get 100 machine gun kills, and this machine gun is going to pop into your inventory. It's very simple and easy. For the catalyst, you're going to have to pick up the quest. I think it's going to be at Eva Levante. Same thing's going to apply. It's very easy. You need 50 medallion points. Remember, platinums are, 40, are 15. So you theoretically would need to turn in three platinum medals and one gold, and you'd be done. That's however you get to the math. You need 15 medallion points, and those have to be deposited into the podium. Once they're deposited, they count for all these different quests. Then you need three more contender cards after that. They can be gold or platinum. It does not matter. And then finally, you need machine gun kills in the daily focus playlist. Now, the daily focus playlist, when you log in and either you're logging in for the day or at least at daily reset, you're going to see what the daily focus is. It could be Crucible. It could be Gambit. It could be Strikes. It could be Guardian Games. Whatever the playlist focus is, you need machine gun kills in that playlist and you'll be collecting competitive spirit. If you're trying to finish this and you're not getting competitive spirit... Check your director and make sure if you're in this mindset, check it when you log in and see what the focus is. If you're not getting competitive spirit, you're probably not in the right playlist. I've been looking up a way to see where it is, being as I have spent plenty of time in the daily focus playlist today. I'm not seeing it anymore, but at every daily reset, you're going to see where it's at. It's really not hard to do. Just check, make sure you know where you're going. Get machine gun kills in there. It's easy. It's like 100 and you're good to go. And that's it. That's the machine gun and the catalyst. It is probably the easiest part of this entire event. And being as this thing will give you an overshield, it's going to probably pair well with Solar 3.0 if that's Season 17 or 18, but everybody thinks it's coming very soon. And it's a mini gun, basically, that's really cool with an overshield. And when you get the catalyst, the shield is stronger, and if it breaks, it partially reloads the magazine of 200 bullets. Basically what I'm saying, get the damn machine gun. It's amazing. And when machine guns are getting a 40% buff in PvE, and this is getting the 20% buff to bosses, 40% is going to be to miners and majors, this could be really powerful. So please, do not miss this. You have three weeks. Spend like a couple of hours and get the gun. You could be good for all year long. So don't miss this one. And that basically wraps up Guardian Games. So again, thank you guys for watching the ad. If you haven't watched that one, if you can go back and watch it, it's a good way to help support me helps with the sponsor uh, also clicking the link in the description or in the pinned comment that really helps me out as well so if you guys can even just do that that's all i'm asking for in this one if you guys enjoyed it you can like you can subscribe find me on twitch or twitter but if you guys want to support the channel in a free way support the sponsor piece of the content and click on that link thank you guys very much though if you guys are patreon subs or youtube members thank you for that extra support all of you are amazing and i'll see you soon